Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video. Uh, this is another one of my calculus series, specifically on limits, and I've already done a couple uh, limits using conjugate. And uh, in this video, I'm going to do some harder examples. So one that involves uh, a little bit more of a complicated conjugate than one that involves two times the conjugate. So first of all, you got to remember that that uh, we use the conjugate when we have a situation where we have roots and we also have 0 over 0. So if I sub 3 into this guy, and you'll have to take my word for it, it just works out that you have 0 on top and 0 on the bottom. So essentially what that means is we have indeterminate form. So indeterminate form basically means we can't tell what the limit is. So what I tell my students, we need some method to eliminate that 0 over 0. So something in this thing can cancel so that I can get rid of this 0 over 0. So when we have roots involved, generally the best way to get stuff to cancel is via the conjugate. So the conjugate, all it is, is when I change the sign in between two of my terms, and sometimes there's one root, sometimes there's no root. You don't really need roots to have a conjugate. All you got to, if you got two terms, the conjugate of those two terms is the opposite sign in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by that conjugate. So multiply by x plus 1 plus 16x minus 4x all over x plus 1 plus 16x minus 4x. So the rule I always use is the part that I'm not conjugating, which in this case is the top, I never touch. All I do is really I just rewrite them exactly how they are, put them together, but I don't actually like distribute or foil them or anything like that unless I get to a situation where I have no other choice but to. So sometimes that happens, but um, not very often. The majority of you are going to get on a calc exam, you won't have to do that. So then we'll do the first. So the, bot the beauty of, of conjugate is the part that we conjugate we have to do FLA first and last. So sometimes you'll hear it, see people write it as a squared minus b squared. So the first terms multiply together. I, do, I like FLA, not this. So FLA, multiply these two. So root x plus 1 times root x plus 1 is just x plus 1. And then 16 x minus 4, the root of that, times 16 root of 16 x minus 4. And this is going to be minus because these are opposite signs, which they always will be is 16 minus 4x. So you kind of get the hint, you just get to what's underneath the radicands, or one underneath the root sign, which is the radicands. So, I'll simplify this bottom in this step. I'll also factor this little trinomial that I have here. So it's like, what adds to give me negative 1, multiplies to give me negative 6. So what does that is x minus 3, x plus 2. I shouldn't be at all surprised that there's an x minus 3 here. I can always tell what I'm going to cancel out by by uh, by what number my limit goes towards. So if it goes towards 3, it's x minus 3 is going to cancel. If it went towards negative 2, it would be the x plus 2. So there's always a big hint given there with that number what the limit goes to. And on the bottom, I'm hoping that there's also some type of x minus 3 involved. So I'll add my x's. So x subtract negative 4x is 5x. And then 1 subtract 16 is minus 15. So now we can factor the bottom, simplify it a little bit more. And, you know, the worst part of this is just continuously rewriting that, that top part or the bottom part, whatever is the most annoying. And then take a 5 out, and I'm left with x minus 3. So there it is. The x minus 3s are going to cancel. So I'll take my, my blue pen this time, and I'll cancel those two things. Now, I can go ahead, once I do that, I can evaluate my limit. So, I'm going to have 3 plus 2, and that's times square root of 3 plus 1 plus 16 minus 4 times 3, all divided by 5. So this becomes 5 over... And what I have inside here, so this guy is 4, and that's uh, 4 minus 12, so that's square root of 4, I should say, and square root of 4, so that's, that's actually 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2, all divided by 5, so these 5s can cancel, and I'm simply left with 4. 
So there's my limit. So you can see guys, uh, this one's quite a bit more complicated. There's like two instances of factoring. There's a big count to get. But still, ultimately, if you're on a calculus exam, you need, you need to put yourself in the mind frame that if I have a limit to a finite number, so to a number that's not infinity, um, I have to use the conjugate. So um, hopefully that, that example helps you. I'm going to do another one that's even a little bit harder than that one now. Let me just break out my, uh, my new sheet of paper here. So this one involves a uh, double conjugate. So personally as a calculus teacher, um, I'm not a huge fan of these examples but again I'm probably not typical of what you would see teaching calculus I don't have a doctorate of mathematics I have my masters of math education but um, I really believe that when it comes to these examples you can evaluate a student based on you know when you have one conjugate and, and you know what for the most part that's what I've seen on calculus exams but, um, you know, just be aware that this is a type. So, in this example, we have basically two conjugates. So, you can see that because we have a root on top and a root on bottom. So, it doesn't really matter what one we start with first, but I'm going to start with the bottom just because that's kind of, you know, it's kind of what I like to do. So, this is 0 over 0. I'm not going to write it here just to save, my, uh, save a little bit of space. You should always check that on an exam. You might get lucky. And you can just direct substitution, but that will never happen. You should always check it, show that you understand what we're doing. All right, so we're going to leave the top alone because that uh, is not the conjugate. So we'll do the bottom part. So 4 minus 4x plus 4 all over. And then that 4 root 4x minus 4. A lot of 4s going on here. And then so I got the first one, so fla. So 4 minus x. And then negative 1 times 1, so minus 1. So you can see the problem with this is I still have a roots, roots left here in the top. So I'm just going to rewrite this and tidy it up a little bit. So 4 subtract 1 is 3. So I get 3 minus x. So you can see that's my thing that I need to cancel because 3 minus 3 is 0. So I've conjugated once. Now what I, what I sometimes see students do is think they need to foil this guy. Remember, we don't multiply those unless we get no other. We don't, can't figure out anything else. So the other option we have is because we haven't done anything with this root left is to conjugate again. So 4 plus 4x plus 4 all over 4 plus root 4x plus 4. So we've got that guy right there. Now we're going to conjugate. So we can completely just ignore this term. We don't have to worry anything about it. We're just multiplying these two. It's almost like if you said 2 times 3 times 4. It really doesn't matter. This equals, um, well, 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is equals 24. So it doesn't matter if I go 2 times 4 first and get 8 and times 3 is 24 or 3 times 2 is 12 and 10 times 2. Doesn't matter the order I do it in, so it's the same thing. I'm just going to do these and that's it. So I do my fla. So first, <clears throat> let me write this out first. So first, 16. And then last, so minus 4x plus 4. And then, um, so the thing you got to remember, I got to rewrite this guy. So root 4x plus 1. And then. So put this in brackets, and then 3 minus x, put that in brackets, and then times 4 plus square root 4x plus 4. All right, so I multiplied these two, then I got this guy right here. I rewrote that guy, then I put brackets around this, put it here, and then I rewrote that guy and put it right there. So there's a lot going on there for this little example. So I'm going to simplify inside the brackets here, and I'm hoping I'm going to get something that I can either factor, and it's going to be this guy. So, let's see. So the limit as x goes to 3. So I get uh, 16 minus 4 is 12. So I get 12 minus 4x in brackets. And then square root 4 minus x plus 1. <clears throat> all over 3 minus x. And 4 plus 
4 plus <coughs> sorry all right so you can see that this guy factors I can take a 4 out so 4 comes out then I got 3 minus X there it is right there so once you get that part you're in business so I'll rewrite everything first then I'll cancel so again you should recognize I'm gonna get something that eliminates the zero over zero part so the biggest task in this question for me is just rewriting all the stuff correctly if I've done that to now I'd say it's a miracle so I cancel those two so now I can go ahead and sub in my limit so, so I don't need to rewrite it so 4 and then 4 minus 4 plus 1 so this guy's gone <clears throat> really that whole thing is gone doesn't make any difference and then 4 plus 4 times 4 plus 4 so I get 4 over 4 plus and then this guy's gonna be 16 plus 4 so root 20 now ironically I could conjugate that as well um, but I am most definitely not gonna. Um, so again, it all depends on what rules your calculus teacher has, whether or not they want you to conjugate everything. I'm perfectly fine if one of my students left that. If you got all through this way, that is the limit, that is the right answer. Um, so uh, I'm gonna leave it there like that. But again, all if your calculus teacher wanted you to rationalize it, multiply it by that. But I'm certainly not doing a conjugate for the third time. All right, guys. Hope this helps. See you guys in class. Thanks for watching.